Parenting is a tough job. It's unique in the way that it's a bit different for everyone, but there are some universal truths most people can get behind. Like, don't leave your toddlers in a hot car for four hours. It's hot outside, you know what I mean? Oh, so you mean to, okay. Try not to go into an H coma and let your three-year-old leave the house and wander onto the highway. You both are getting arrested, so get your kid dressed. For what? Listen, all parents make mistakes, but some are clearly just not cut out for the job. And it's a shame because although the parents were about to see get in trouble with the law, it's always the kids who ultimately pay the price of their negligence. This video by the channel Detective Williams documents the body cans of some of the worst offenders we've seen recently. And I'll tell you, I'm sometimes hard on myself as a parent when I make mistakes. But after watching this, I'm doing just fine so far. Yeah, I'm all right. Anyhow, let's jump in. Starting with this case, where an officer from the Volusia County Sheriff's Office responded to a call concerning a child out on the driveway who looked neglected. Okay. Yeah. Who's? Did we find? No. I, I just pulled over. I okay. found a man. They were walking in the road. Yes, his face. He actually. Oh, I know where. He, I know where he is. I think I'm pretty sure I know which one. He's from that one right there. Oh, good. I'm pretty sure. Oh, him? Yeah, that's just Lil Charles. He's from that one over there. He's only three, but he loves getting his steps in. Yeah, a bit of a highway walker. This one, cute as a button, though. Hey, buddy. You want to come to me, or are you good with her? Oh, look at this shit. All right, let's go. He's uh, maybe. Hey, hang tight. Can you pull over here for me one second? He's probably closer to two, to be honest. I don't. I think I remember this guy. Poor little man. He, does he say anything to you? No, he didn't. He didn't say anything. He's not a pretty guy, for sure. He didn't say nothing, though. No. Oh, okay. Listen, if you're two years old and you're already on a first name basis with the local PD. Your parents are probably pieces of shit. Sounds like this clearly isn't the first time he's been out to this location. Give me one second. Come here, buddy. But he almost ran out in front of my truck when I was trying to hear he's running in front of their car. Gotcha. Jesus Christmas. <laughs> Give me one. Just hang tight for me one second and I'll get all your information. Is this where you came from? Yeah. Is this where you came from? Yeah. Want to knock? My blue lights, buddy. Look at that. We're gonna we're gonna sit in that car. That rims on the car, though. Can you hang tight with him while I pull my car over here, and we can he can sit in the back of my car for a second? Yeah, Absolutely is. Come here. Okay. Love the motherly oh, instinct from this lady. The officer too. Absolutely. Just... Let me pull my car in here. I'm pretty... I had to. I had to pull over. I had to. No, absolutely. I feel like there's nothing more instinctual for a lot of people, especially anyone of age or parents themselves than to want to love and protect children who are in distress. You just walking right here? Yeah, get ready to walk into the intersection. And I'm just coming from me to murder for my doctor's appointment. Okay. It's freaking me out. Would you mind giving me a written statement I about what exactly sure. happened? Okay, give me I one second. I definitely will. And I know you're working, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible for you. Thank you. <laughs> That's like a main road, 55 mile per hour speed limit type beat, not just a little neighborhood side street. You know, regardless of the speed limit, you don't want your three-year-old wandering onto the road. But, you know, when you're zooted on opiates and other bad habits that have your two brain cells fighting in a last man standing death match, your priorities can be a bit backwards. I know we haven't seen the parents yet, and that may sound a bit presumptuous, but it's not that hard to see where this one is headed. Speaking of bad habits, though, Today's video sponsor is helping accelerate humanity's breakup from a popular destructive habit. So let's talk about that and we'll get right back to it. Cold turkey may be delicious on a sandwich, but when it comes to breaking bad habits, there's a better way. I'm not talking about rubbing apple cider vinegar on your nips or whatever your holistic aunt does. I'm talking about today's video sponsor, Fume, and how they approach these problems in a different way. Instead of the drastic and uncomfortable change that accompanies a habit break, why not start by taking the bad out of the habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. No electronics, no harmful chemicals, just refreshing, natural, flavored air in a variety of delicious options. That's correct. It is a habit that is guilt-free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit more manageable. I wasn't sure what to expect when they reached out, so I held my judgment until receiving my fume, and honestly, the flavors are super smooth, but as a tactile, fidgety guy, I really appreciate its build quality and the way it's weighted and specifically designed with magnets and movable parts to fidget with including the adjustable airflow dial. Just crack open the flavor core you want, place it into the fume, and you're good to go. 
It's that easy. So if you're looking for that edge to help you stop something you've been putting off, I really think that Fume could be what you're looking for. It's easy and enjoyable, and the success stories continue to pile up as over 150,000 customers have been served so far. You can join Fume and help accelerate humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Just go to tryfume.com slash Leon Lush or scan the QR code and use code Leon Lush to get 10% off your Journey Pack. You can also upgrade to the new Fume Solano that launched on November 6th to enjoy the premium walnut barrel and black onyx mouthpiece and still get your 10% off. That's tryfume.com. Use code Leon Lush. I appreciate you. Don't want to say it's that trailer right there, right. but I was out here for a similar incident and it was that trailer right there. So I'm going to try to find the mom again. Same child? They were younger. I'm pretty, they were younger obviously at the time, but <laughs> oh, that's why I'm kind of remembering him. Uh, You're right. a godsend today. Yes. Go ahead. Amen. Um, you want to send it back in my car real quick? In the in the blue, the blue light. Kudos car, to the, the Good Samaritans. Right? Woo! Look at you, man. And that's so cool. And the cop. Right? Look just, at you. All right. You, you can. You want to sit in your being in your so car, friendly with other men. And I'll hang out here with him. Probably hasn't felt that kind of love maybe in his entire life, and that's just from a couple of strangers and a cop. What's up, little man? You like it in here? In tragedy, man. Woo! Boom! Push it. Look at that. After receiving no response from the parents, the officer decides to take the witness statements and wait for the parents. The officer's behavior with the child should be applauded as it helped with keeping the child calm. Agreed. Not long after, the parents come out and are confronted by the officer. You recognize me? Oh, they woke up. No. You don't recognize me? I was here last time when this happened. You remember that? Yeah. And your son today was in the street walking out on US-1, and luckily some nice ladies Daddy. saw him and stopped before he got smushed by a freaking car. You know, what were you guys doing in there? I'm uh, gonna go out on a limb here and say drugs, opiates, H, booze, all of the above, whatever they get their hands on, probably. We were just sleeping. Just sleeping? I still cat nap. That, that, Can that, we get him a new diaper on? That brat doesn't even know where new she's at right really now. really soiled. You don't even want to, like, I mean, you can look at it, obviously, but it's disgusting. Like, I didn't even want to walk in there, but I wanted to make sure there wasn't another kid in there. Is this the same kid or a different one? No, it's the same kid. It's the same kid that called us last time. He's got a younger sister, I think. She's with the grandparents. Kid called so the last time? Call DCF. Or the grandparents. Shockingly, the mother had no reaction upon knowing that her son was on the verge yeah. of being run over, she showing the know type of people they are. Fortunately for the little on. boy, the officer then informs the parents that they are going to be arrested for child neglect. Good. Step out of the car for me. Come here. Come on. Step out of the car. Put your hands behind your back. I've had enough of this for both of you. What? So you're arrested? You both are getting arrested. So get your kid dressed. For what? Child neglect. Why? Come on. Why? What do you mean, why? why? I'm seeing the back of my car. I've had enough Please. of you guys. There's no consequences for any of my actions in my life. What's wrong? This is so unfair. Sit in the back. Get in there. Please, please, why? What do you mean, why? Sit, sit in the back of the car. Slide in the car. Now. It's crazy how now now they're upset, right? Oh, the idea that your child literally wandered off and almost got ran over on a highway because you're too doped up to know he was missing. She's like, oh, that's crazy, but that happens like all the time. But oh, now you're in trouble? Don't worry about the safety of your son, but you're in a little bit of trouble. Now you start to cry and whine. Yeah, a little just indicative of probably their entirety of their life. Sure. Poor parenting, add that one to the list. <laughs> Let's go. It's officer rules. Turn around, come here. You, you're next. For what? Why am, I, why, why am I getting arrested? Child neglect, put your hands behind your back. What do I do though? What did you do? It's what about you didn't do. You didn't watch your kid. Your kid's out on the road. This is a history with you two. I mean, this is just a, a circus. All I want was the kid to get some clothes and get changed. What do you you guys I couldn't even doing? do that. What do you think I was doing? F***ing around. That's what you were doing. I was putting clothes on. This is not fair at all. It's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair to your son. That's what it's not fair to you. Have a seat. F*** it, dude. That officer just had enough. I, I would have been in the same position. You can only take so much of that probably before you just start having absolute contempt for people like that. And that loser is absolutely right. It's not fair at all, but for his child, as the officer said, the fact that 
That child got stuck with a couple of deadbeat parents that can't even change his diaper or have a modicum of concern for his safety. Unfair. Best case scenario is he grows up using his disdain for you to make sure he doesn't end up anything like you. It's not ideal, but hoping for the best. Uh, they're letting him eat old McDonald's that's like 10 years old. They can't get him clothes. But he's walking around with his glass everywhere. You know, this is just ridiculous. My patience is done with these two. Not having shown any type of remorse for the situation in which their son was, but doing it when they realize they are being arrested is disgusting. The couple's son was placed in the custody of the State Department of Children and Families. That's obviously not ideal either, putting kids into the system, but sometimes it's like probably the lesser of two evils, right? And the later identified parents, 28-year-old Yajira Tirado and 25-year-old Jacob Kruger were booked into the Volusia County Branch Jail on a $5,000 bond. But if you thought those were disgusting parents, wait until you hear about 19-year-old Alexi Treviso. All right, so this next story I had heard about, I think a few months ago, it went super viral because it's absolutely heinous and obscene. On January 27, 2023, Alexi Treviso was admitted to Artesia General Hospital in New Mexico for extreme back pain. The only thing, however, <laughs> is that this wasn't just normal back pain. She was having labor pain, and instead of letting the doctors know, she decided to do the unthinkable. What followed was an incident that would forever traumatize the medical staff involved in the case. So I started working her up. Um, we did a pregnancy test on her, showed positive. She was denying that she had sex. Um, then she said she had to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom. She was in there for quite a while. We kept knocking on the door. Finally, we got her to open the door, and there was blood everywhere. She was cleaning it up. Okay. So we took her back to the room, and it, I was afraid that she knew she was pregnant. She had done something to herself. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctor started doing an exam on her. We had the lady come to clean the bathroom. She put the baby in the trash can, and then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Oh, wow. okay. So they looked, when they looked in there, it looked, there was no trash in there, but it was right. underneath the clean bag. The okay. baby's dead, okay? We have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. Yeah, how old was the, how old was the baby? I don't know, it's full term. She just had it, she had it in the bathroom was what happened. And then she, whatever she did, I don't know, she's gonna lie. She wouldn't tell us she's pregnant. She's been lying the whole time. Yikes. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to even, there's nothing really sarcastic or funny to say about this one. Um, interesting to see how it develops though once the mother gets involved. Alexi had been in the bathroom for quite some time until nurses realized something was wrong. Initially thinking that Alexi had hurt herself, they never imagined finding a deceased newborn in the trash can of the bathroom. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Mom's there now. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. We came out and we didn't know what to do. Alexi, I told you about this. But you told your daughter about what? not to have a baby you told no one about in a hospital bathroom and throw it in the trash? Is that what you told her about? A fucking, what a weird reaction. We came out and we didn't know what to do. Lexi, I told you about this. But if I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. I was not crying or making. What did you do to it? Okay, stop right here. Stop, stop. Number one priority, guys. Number one priority is she just had a baby. I don't know if she's delivered the placenta. She's bleeding significantly. Yeah. I've spoken to the obstetrician at Loveless. They want her up there as soon as possible. Okay. I need, I need your, I obviously need your permission to transfer her for medical. To, she is she's 19. Oh, you're right. You, but you, she you, is a student, too. She's no, still no, 19 You're, you're right. You, you're right. She needs to, I'm sorry, I forgot she's 19. But you need to, for, to make sure that you're safe. I need to send you to left loveless to labor delivery. Will you please agree to that? Madness, yes. dude. Yes. yes. Okay, great. I'm going to work on that. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, we do have to have the police involved. And nothing was crying. It came out with nothing. No, nothing was crying, just ref like disassociating, referring to it as nothing. Nothing was crying. That is so, this is... I know, I know. But the, the baby's gonna have to be taken for autopsy and uh, there'll be an investigator and everything. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but we need to do this correctly. The speculator in me uh, thinks this girl has probably been raised in a 
some sort of draconian household and made to believe that her life is basically over if she strays from the perfect child blueprint that her mom or parents had laid out for her. Possibly religion fueled, maybe it's culturally influenced, I, whatever it may be, to go to the lengths that she did to deny and lie and cover up the pregnancy to the point of dumping it in a trash can at the hospital after it coming out in the bathroom. That to me is a culmination of parenting failures that prioritize perfection at the expense of any sort of trust. Again, I'm speculating. I'm sure there's a million other variables that went into how they wound up here, but what an absolute disaster. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but we need to do this correctly. The newborn had been found covered with linen at the bottom of the trash can, which shows that Alexi had tried to hide her crime, but failed. Not only that, uh, yeah. but she refers to her baby as nothing when saying nothing was crying, which again shows the type of person she actually is. Where did you put the baby at? Tell me the truth. She's like, uh, 517. You put it in the bag? Yes. Yeah. In what bag? Why did you say anything to us? Do you want to get in trouble for this now? It's a little late for that, mom! Is that, like, the way the mother is handling this is so unnerving. Like, your daughter just told you she popped the baby out that you didn't know about she that she threw in a trash bag and your first response is like you want to get in trouble for this now? Like, we're I'm starting to get a little, you know, picture of, of maybe why we're in the situation to begin with. The mother's reaction yeah. and attitude to the news are totally not what one would expect in a situation like this. More sad is to see one of the nurses yeah, showing more compassion and calm, grief for the baby like... than his real family. And all I saw was like blood everywhere, like on the walls, on the toilet. It just looked like a horror film. It Jesus, felt... yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do. It's just hard because I'm a mother, I'm a crown mother. And I've never, I've dealt with death before, but never like this. Like, and that's from someone that didn't even know any of them showing some actual emotion. And then you see the mother, cold, draconian. Oh, you want to get in trouble for this? Lexi, you could get in trouble for this. Anyways, you know, like, eventually. Alexi Treviso was finally detained and later arrested on charges of first degree murder and tampering with evidence. Crazy. She faces life in prison if convicted. Show up. To arrest a nine-year-old, nineteen-year-old girl, girl for first-degree murder. You can go to the detention. Do you know where it is? Everything. Okay, so what is she under arrest for? She's over eighteen. She's got a I I understand that, Detective Gonzalez. What is she under arrest for? She has warrant for arrest. For what? Mom. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to take a stab in the dark here. You were at the hospital when this whole thing went down, or at least saw the aftermath. Just take a little, just a little, just a little layup. Take a shot. What do you think she might be under arrest for? That's all I'm gonna tell you. Okay. What do you mean that's all you're gonna tell me? I'm gonna, she's over there. I understand that, but I, I have a right to know as well. And we'll tell you I do kind of agree with that as well. Let me know now. Let me know now. I'm giving you the corporation. I told you everything. Answer my question. Well, what is she under arrest for? Like I said, she's over the age of 18. To make matters worse, not long after this incident, Alexi was seen enjoying her school prom, and her mother is suing the hospital, blaming them for the whole ordeal. Of course but she is. So mom's suing the hospital because it's their fault, right? That you're like, I can't even go down. I don't even, I'm just going to get too heated talking about just this uh, complete lack of accountability, responsibility, but it's all kind of, all the pieces, all the boxes are checked at why this situation is so fucked up. And typically that comes from the top down. Secondly, this is wild. Like, was that like the potential baby daddy that you went to prom with? You know, before she, you know, threw the child out like a Kleenex, or maybe she didn't want him to know. Maybe that's why it was such a big deal for her, because it was someone else's, or you know what? Who cares, I'm at prom, I fucking love this song. My bad habits lead to late nights and Anyways, uh, next up. On April 22nd, 2021, police arrived at a home to discover the cries of children screaming for their mother. Neighbors concerned about the kids' well-being were quick to dial 911. Jesus, I mean, anytime you see this kind of disastrous, kind of like 
hoarding behavior like you look at a house and you're like oh they're probably hoarders there's just something going on that makes people like that incapable of caring for other people sometimes because they clearly can't care for themselves i don't know what whatever that might be drugs mental illness combination of those things who but it's just so shitty when it's like why do those people have to have kids you know are they both your children just just live your life out and be the end of your gene pool. Yeah. The officers that arrived then found the children locked in a room in deplorable conditions. The mother, once confronted, even dares to put their cries off as them playing. Hello. Yeah, you. Me? Hey. Yeah. Yeah, are you the mother of these children here? Yeah, what's up? They just, they've been screaming and crying. Yeah, they're playing. They have the windows open, that's what they do. They're not playing, ma'am. Looks like he needs juice or something. He's showing me his yeah, I was just yeah, just there's a little game I like to play called Scream for Our Mother at the top of their lungs and cry uncontrollably because they're locked in a room. Fun little game. We watched it on YouTube actually. I think Blippy likes to do it as well. Fucking moron. Okay, well, we're getting complaints. They feel like there's uh, children in distress over there. Yeah, they, and they they um they're very loud and they scream a lot. Yeah, it's called a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what kids do. You typically have to deal with that. That's part of being a parent, but I guess you wouldn't know what that's like. Very, um, How old are they? Uh, almost two and three. Oh. Is, very, very is anybody supervising them? Yeah, I was just in there. I bet you were. Like, I was just in there getting them stopped. Mm-hmm. But I have my other daughter in the So other there's room. like 10,000 choking hazards in there that they're locked in that room and nobody's in there supervising them? As they're screaming for the whole neighborhood to call us? And this apparently has not been the first time from all your neighbors calling in, saying that they hear this multiple times throughout the week. Brain's really running now. She's got the gears turning like, damn it, he is catching on to my little ruse. How do I turn this in? You know, well, you know what? They scream a lot. And they're loud, so what can I do? Hands are tied. Man, that's some funny shit. The officers, besides the disgusting look of the house, notice cockroaches on the walls. And to make matters worse, she even declares that the house is a safe environment for her children. When was the last time you even changed their diapers? Yeah. As it's sagging there, probably full. They had a ton of juice, and it was probably an hour and a half ago. Their diapers. Uh, press F Does for doubt. Does it seem to be a safe environment for your children? Yeah, it is completely safe. That, like, I mean, just look, it's dilapidated and gross, dude. I don't, you know, this type of situation, you feel like if someone's living like this on their own in squalor, I mean, they've made shows about it on TLC. Obviously, you guys remember the show Hoarders. It's like we look at it as this spectacle and it's like, wow, these people are so fucked up and like mentally unwell. Look at how they live. It's disgusting. How could anyone live like this? And that's cool if you want to be like, that's entertainment for you. And it's like you flip through the channels and it's like, oh, look at how fucked up that person is. That's like half, it's like 90% of entertainment these days. Uh, but when there's kids on the receiving end of that, it's like it it has a different tone to it, you know, just like a less of an entertainment piece and more like a fuck, dude. Why did someone have to dump seeds in you? It's just, they're very, very loud and vocal. And since both of the windows are open, this is a safe environment, huh? We're still cleaning it out. Their uncle and aunt just left and they trashed the place. So. I'm not enthused so far, to be honest with you. <laughs> you notice the cockroaches on the walls? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And you can see the. So the screen, the the screen in was in there. Yeah, the screen was in. But you see how they have the holes and so forth. They're pushing their right. fingers through, and I mean, I feel like he could easily push that out if he actually tried. Okay. Um, it took her several minutes to see a, a good amount of time to answer the door. Um, when she answered the door, she was like groggy and tired. Let me guess: was she sleeping too? Just like the first couple we saw? Oh, we were just sleeping, taking a quick nap. We're just sleeping. Don't sorry, sorry about all the tourniquets on the floor. I try not to step on those when you come and survey the house. No. So she was the infant was asleep in the bed. Um, she seemed tired, groggy, kind of out of it, like she just awoken. 
and they are banging on the door. I imagine that's the that CPS guy. From the out, <laughs> other side out. Is with an empty juice cup. Mommy, mommy, mommy. With an empty cream. Juice cup. Juice cup. Juice. Oh, juice cup. Oh, I was like, what's a juice cup? Okay. And screaming, mommy, mommy, juice, juice. And just loud screeching. The mother, who previously had no reaction to being told about her children's cries, now is seen breaking down as she's arrested for child neglect. Yeah. Um, so based on our findings tonight, okay, um, we do have probable cause to make the arrest. Um, both of you. Um, it, it's, it's just not fair to what's happening with these kids. All right, so all, both of y'all are going to be going to jail tonight um, for child neglect. Wait, there's a dude there too? Where was he in all this? Okay, DCF has obviously custody of the kids, and they're going to be staying with your sister, cousin. Is that what it is? Um, hopefully sister, guys... cousin, husband, stepwife, stepsister, they're all kind of the, probably the same around there. You're able to get out tomorrow, you can get back to your baby. Yeah, with what? We have no money. We have no, I have no family. I understand. I understand, but we we have probable cause to make the arrest. Yeah, we don't we don't tolerate this. All right, the the conditions they're in is unsafe for them, in general, completely unsatisfactory. You're gonna probably want your wallet, your ID when you go. All right, go to your back there. Christina Coe and Gilbert Bridewell were finally arrested Gilbert and Bridewell. transported to the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility. They were both charged with three counts of felony child neglect without great bodily harm. And because neighbors called the cops, these small babies were saved from terrible people like this. You know, it's not, I, I'm never like, yeah, they took the kids away and sent them to CPS. Like, it's just a, tra it's just tragic no matter how you look at it. That couple probably loved those kids in some type of way, but like, I don't care if you have no money. I mean, I've, you know, there's been plenty of stories of families they don't have much that are able to show love and kindness and compassion and safety for their children, right? That Those conditions were absolutely deplorable, but that story just sucks because it's like, he called them terrible people in this video. I just think they're unwell. I don't know. This time, kids were left in a hot car until an Uber driver realized this is crazy. It. On August 21st, 2021, Ohio police officers responded to a 911 call about kids being left out in a car for hours. You've seen all the videos online when there's like a dog in the back of a hot car for like nine minutes and the passerbys go nuts and like break the windows and then they find the dog owner and they shame him into oblivion, rightfully so. Well now, can I introduce you to the woman who left her kids in the back of a hot car for four hours? It kind of makes sense. You know, a lot of dog owners say that it's like having kids. So I guess she took it seriously. And man, you know what? I don't, the math's not working out on that one. Never mind. Let's just watch it. You know, I'm pointing out to you now. You've seen the kids in the car left. I talked to the little girl. She said she don't know how long she's been in here. Okay. One is like an infant, probably like four or five. And I think the other one was like three, three or four. Okay. Uh, I was just doing an Uber Eats here. Oh, you're fine. Okay. And drove by and the little girl was hanging out the window screaming. What like, the, the, the windows were rolled up though? Uh, like they're, the two are like the two how they are were kind of like how they are, but the two back were were this one was up. But the little like three year old here was hanging out the car screaming, like I was screaming for what her you, mom. So I stopped. Don't and say. I was like, uh, what's what's your, your name? mom's name? What's your name? Steven. What's what's you say here? you notify. I, I, I do I do gig work for work, okay, so okay. Um, I was doing an Uber Eats here, uh, and uh, I, like I said, I, I drive by and she was the little girl was hanging out the window screaming uh, for her mom. So I'm a parent, so I was like, so I walked up to the car to make sure there was nobody in the car with them. God bless this dude too, by the way. So many people I feel like these days I just can't be bothered to notice what's going on around them. So just the idea that he was driving around, saw this little girl in distress. And instead of being like, well, it sucks for her and like going to deliver his Uber Eats, he has that compassion as a parent, got out of the car and decided to look into it. And I fucking love that. I need more people like that. And I asked her, I said, what's your mom's name? I'll go get her. And then I saw the security guard and I asked him to come outside because this, this is a serious matter. 
and I and I was like, we gotta call the police. This is not. This isn't okay. Here we can see how, thanks to this guy, these kids were saved from a fatal fate. Well, to the shock of everyone, we, know that, we are but... later informed that the mother had been donating her plasma and had checked in at 7.30 in the morning, leaving her two children in the hot car for almost four hours until this point. It seems that because this happened in the morning... I want to be honest with you. <laughs> if you gave me 3,000 guesses as to what that mother was doing to leave her kids in the car for four hours, donating plasma was definitely not going to be on that list. <laughs> kids were luckily able to resist for longer as it wasn't too hot. So she's been checked in. Here's the deal. I don't care, like, temperature is irrelevant right now. Like, obviously, it's relevant. Like, if it was really hot, way more problematic. But if it's nice, a cool, temperate 65, 70 degrees, does not fucking matter. You don't leave your kids unattended in the back of a car for more like at all you know like maybe you can run in and like grab your starbucks to go order you know for like 40 seconds tops if you can see the car through the window <laughs> four hours donating plasma yeah Ooh. and with us at 7 30 a.m 7 30 a.m okay So you got the meat wagon there, probably just check on the kids. It's getting really warm out here now. It's really hot. And, and look, about... the baby's dressed in pants and long sleeves. What's your name? My name is Stacy. I'm the registered nurse here. All right, Stacy. All right, we're just getting them checked out. Yeah. I appreciate it a lot. You're welcome. Been here since 7:30. Been here since 7:30. When confronted, like, the mother the was seen fuck? unable to process what she had done wrong. Clearly showing what a great parent she is. <laughs> like we've seen in the other cases, she breaks down crying after being told she is going to be charged for child neglect, but has no reaction to when the officers told her about how she had endangered her children. It seems to be a common theme, right? Where it's like they just are unaware of how negligent they're being and they're like, oh, well, whatever. But the second it's their own well-being and convenience is in question, it becomes a problem. It's very... And the kids are here home. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. We come here. However, they were unable, they were, people here, bystanders, were able to, you know, open the door, give the kids some water, okay? Yes, ma'am. However, this is serious. This is, this is severity crime, okay? You can't just leave the kids in the car unattended. Right? The car was not on. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't leave it on. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, <laughs> it's hot outside, you know what I mean? Oh, so you mean to, okay. Even if it was. Oh, she's like, all right, my bad. Next time I'll leave it on for four hours so the AC can run. I got you. No problem. Um, people can take your children, yeah, they can yeah. take your car. Yeah. And it's like near 85 degrees outside. Inside that car heats up very fast. Yeah. And okay. children at a young age are very, they're easily raise their temperature level. All right, so I'm going to go talk to my sister here. Let's see how we're going to proceed. We're going to go to the hospital get the kids checked out. I'm struggling with the idea that it's ignorance and not just negligence, right? To try and wrap my head around this idea that this woman maybe didn't even know that it was a bad idea to do that. She's, she's kind of acting like, oh. Like, you know, I, I'm sorry, what was wrong with it? Yeah, I didn't I didn't leave the car on, so what's the problem? I'd almost prefer it be like malfeasance, you know? Like ill intent, neglect, instead of just being like, oh, I didn't know, that. that's almost scarier, to be honest. I want to notify Child Family Services, all right? And we'll go from there, okay? Okay. 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 Listen, I, you know, being a parent is tough, dude. You, you get it, but you have to, you make compromises where you can. There's just some things you can't do. You just gotta find a way around leaving your kids in a hot car for four hours, you know, like that. It, so as much as I try to sympathize and empathize with people that are struggling, it's like you just, there's some things you just can't do, regardless how much, how much you struggle. No. Uh, go put your hands down. We're just detaining you right now, all right? I'm, put your hands I'm down being right detained. Now. Yes. Put your hands together like you're praying. Like you're praying. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of praying. Yeah, stand by, all right? The mother, who previously hadn't checked up on her kids, now demands to see her kids <laughs> as she's being arrested. Hasn't even asked to see him yet. That was crazy. Hold on. Yeah, 
Stacy Aldridge? Uh, 7.30, right? 7.43. 7.43, okay. I wanted to come in. Please, can I go and see him? Please, can I go and see him? Please, can I go and see him? Hey, laugh. Can I go and see them? Yeah, oh, they're going. They're going to the hospital. Okay. Am, am I? The woman, later identified Jesus. as Tamisha Massey, was finally charged with endangering children. She was then entered into a drug court mandated program where she successfully completed it after a few months. So she got charged, sounds like uh, by the, the court mandated program she got put into, it was maybe drug related. Yeah. Some of the body cam videos we've done before have involved children kind of getting the brunt end of the deal. This one was, that was the main focus. And you know, I don't know what the takeaway here is exactly. I know we watch a fair amount of depressing videos on this channel. And if anything, hopefully it reminds us to work our hardest at being decent human beings, friends, parents, sons and daughters, whatever it is to help balance the scales. Because these incidents are obviously not the norm, but there will always be a part of humanity that is just completely fucked. And if you survive growing up in a fucked up environment, like some of these children in the cases we just saw, I hope you're the one that breaks the cycle of generational fuckery in your bloodline. Hell, you're watching a Leon Lush video right now, so it's safe to say you're highly intelligent and cool. So I know that probably won't be a problem. The only thing that will be a problem is if you don't stand up out of your chair, drop your trousers and hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. As always, I appreciate your time, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.